So we're at the Venice Biennale Art Festival in the Israeli room. And we're looking at this projection that's coming from the ceiling of this beach from above and there are three men on it with knives in the sand and they're drawing their knives across the sand to create a kind of metaphor for the borders in, in whatever country and it's obviously a political statement but they're doing it with knives to show the kind of brutality of the situation and perhaps the above perspective kind of shows what people look like, how people view it from outside. And what does it make you feel? It kind of makes me think it's a bit silly in a way and it just it just seems so human because the way they're rubbing it out in the sand it just shows mistakes in a way. Okay so we just went to the Israel pavilion and overall I quite liked it. I th the videos I especially liked with the women coming out the sea and scraping the sand back and I think it was quite focused on its past and like slightly mysterious and weird things, all really slow videos like ice melting or the, the, sea, the salt, yeah, bordered in the salt from the Dead Sea and the uh, shoelaces tied together. I think it was all about trying to mend their like messed up past, which I thought was quite nice. It, was, it wasn't as aggressive as I thought it would be. We're inside the British um, pavilion art space and Someone, Mike Nelson, has created um, a replica of an installation which he did in Istanbul and um, for the Istanbul art festival thing. And um, he's trying to show the relationship between different materials and the relationship between Venice and Istanbul, the two cities. Um, and. As a concept, it's very interesting and very um, kind of awe-inspiring, but I don't really feel like much skill has gone into the creation of it. It's just kind of construction for the sake of construction, um, and yet it's very intricate and um, complicated, but um, I don't feel like it's art, really. He's interested, he's, he's interested in his idea of cyclic practice. Uh, artists traditionally, you know, you're always kind of looking back at what you've previously done. In. Yeah. Mike's installations aren't saleable. You can't sort of sell these things on, particularly aside from Coral Reef, which has been remade for, for Tate to kind of own now. So there's no way that Mike sort of has these things that kind of, uh, these sculptures that kind of, that he can have in his studio and um, have in collections. So all of his work is commission based. And yeah. again, it's temporal, it's ephemeral. You know, it doesn't come to them, but this will be destroyed. Yeah. But there might be a couple of things that he'll hold on to. So from 2003, it was those photographs. So yeah. those then kind of act as a thing that lingers with Mike, that, that he will then use as a trigger point for another show. So there'll be something from this, perhaps, which will then trigger this next thing. So it becomes this idea of continual reassessment of both uh, things that have interested him, but on his own practice as well, this re-evaluation of, of what it is we do as yeah. an artist or as human beings. I do you like it, though? This? Yeah. I think it's incredible. Why? I think it's incredible. Well, for those things we can have just yeah. I've been talking about. Yeah. This is, you know, this idea of Mike, what Mike's asking us to do is to say is that, 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 okay, sculpture as we kind of see it generally in galleries is a thing that you stand around and look at. It's an object, in the old kind of joke, it's the thing you trip over whilst you're looking at a painting. Mm. What Mike's doing is then saying, well, how do you make an, uh, a sculpture whereby it's totally kind of immersive? How do you construct a thing which is both traditionally kind of... Uh, talks about sculpture in terms of uh, very kind of formal terms, in terms of shape, in terms of arrangement, but then also does a thing where it's immersive and narrative based, whereby you can lead someone through a series of rooms, a series of spaces, and conjure up this quite cinematic experience. And that's what this does. I've just been to the Denmark Pavilion, and I think that out of everything I've seen today, it is one that most makes you think, and not only in terms of art, but in terms of what goes on in the world, and the context is very important. Um, for me it had the, the biggest emotional response because you have to take the time to read and really study each work, each photograph especially. Um, they all have a very interesting backstory and offer an insight into unexpected things going on in the, in the news, uh, especially in the States. And um, the whole gallery de dedicated to freedom of speech, um, particularly the animation, it um, makes you think of the recurring issues um, in really surprising ways I think. My favourite piece has to be the animation 
because um, I'm generally into that uh, style of art and I think the simple graphic approach and uh, the, the modified voice, uh, the running commentary beneath it makes it look, um, make, make, reminds you of several different things at the same time. The running commentary for me was uh, like a news article and um, the, the four faces um, is not a new concept but it was um, done in a lively matter even though it is clearly animated. Um, you really think and believe all that that augmented voice is telling you. Well, I've just been in a Japanese pavilion and it was seriously one of the most amazing things I've seen all day. The graphic design was covering the walls and it was kind of slanted, so it looked, it gave it a real kind of 3D, a three-dimensional kind of effect. And it, it really reminded me of some of the Japanese animation such as Spirited Away and House Moving Castle, which I really, really enjoy. And it has a kind of spiritual and ethereal feel about it, which I really, really liked. So we just went to the Japan Pavilion, and it was like a room of mirrors and this moving am uh, animation of sort of water and like fingers coming up from the water, <laughs> mushrooms growing, it's all quite weird, kind of disgusting, but um, I thought the mirror effect was really good. The room was completely black and dark, and it was kind of, you got engulfed by it. But um, still think I prefer Korea.